Okay, so foldables are expensive, we all know that, but even within the foldable space, there's a pretty wide range in pricing depending on exactly what experience you're looking for. If what you're after is a phone that folds out into a small tablet, which is great for multitasking and running larger apps, you're gonna have to pay a lot more for that than you would for a phone that folds down into something more compact, which is great for your pocket. This is the Galaxy Z Fold 2, and this is the Galaxy Z Flip. Each of these is what I would consider the go-to option for each foldable form factor, but of course your options don't stop at Samsung. There's also the Motorola Razr, the Huawei Mate XS, the Escobar phone, although don't, don't, by that one. But these are just the examples that I have with me right now. And rather than focusing on these specific devices, I wanna to talk to you about why you would buy either of these form factors to begin with, and why for most people, a traditional phone with a non-folding screen is probably still the way to go, at least for now. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and let's talk about foldables. First off, let's talk about the Z Fold 2's form factor, what I like to call expandable phones. The benefits of this design are pretty straightforward. In most cases, you get a cover display that you can use like any other phone, and you can fold it out to effectively double its width and get the screen space of a small tablet. This gives you a lot of room to work with, whether you're multitasking or watching videos, or even if you just want larger versions of your favorite apps. And on the Fold 2 in particular, you can leave the screen open at various angles to use compatible software in different ways. My favorite example is being able to prop the phone up on a flat surface, almost like a tiny laptop, and use the cameras as if the phone was sitting on a tripod. This is personally my favorite type of foldable since the multitasking experience is truly unlike anything you get on any other phone, but it isn't without its downsides. For one, as I said before, this type of phone is very expensive, and understandably so. You're getting more screen space, more hardware. This really is a lot of phone. But there's also not a lot of competition. Especially in the US, where Huawei's Mate XS isn't available, Samsung is basically your only option here, and for $2,000, you're gonna need to really want this experience to justify buying one. Even assuming you can justify it though, there's yet another hurdle to clear, app support. Expandable phones need each app you use to support two different aspect ratios, and in most cases, neither of those are typical. Take the Z Fold 2 for example yet again. The cover screen has a 25 by 9 aspect ratio, and the inner display is 22.5 by 18. That's not exactly the 16 or 18 by 9 that we're used to seeing, and it could mean you'll run into compatibility issues with your favorite apps on one or both of these screens. Instagram looks ridiculous on the Fold 2's inner display, and so does Adobe Lightroom. But that cover screen is too narrow for Lightroom, and it makes it hard to see the image I'm editing and the controls at the same time. So Lightroom, one of my favorite apps, is basically a bust on the Fold without using a third-party app to force it to fill the screen. Now, this isn't meant to scare you off from foldable phones. On the contrary, the Z Fold 2 is one of my favorite devices I've ever reviewed. But when you're spending this kind of money on a relatively new category of device, it's good to know the downsides as well as the upsides. On the flip side is, well, flip phones. The Galaxy Z Flip and Z Flip 5G are Samsung's offerings, but you can also grab the Motorola Razr or the updated Razr 5G. The small details differ between devices, but the general concept is the same. You get a fairly average sized phone that folds down into something more compact. This is really nice if you've got shallow pockets, since a flip phone won't stick out of them the same way a full-sized phone would. But outside of that portability, there's not much added functionality versus a traditional phone. Sure, you can prop it up on a table and take selfies or make video calls with your friends, but you're not getting more screen or a larger canvas for split-screen multitasking. In fact, with the flip phones we've seen so far, you're actually spending more money than you would on a traditional phone to get a worse experience in some ways. The Z Flip isn't water resistant and its ultra thin glass display is more fragile than on most phones. The Motorola Razr has a plastic screen that's prone to scratches and dents and none of these phones have enough room internally for the kind of great camera systems we're seeing lately on phones like the Note 20 Ultra. Again though, that doesn't necessarily mean you shouldn't buy one of these. Portability isn't an insignificant feature, and those with small pockets might choose portability over the more grandiose features like the latest processor or the best possible cameras. 
And you know what? Flip phones are just fun, and sometimes that's good enough. Now, if you're into experimental form factors but don't necessarily trust flexible glass or plastic screens, there are also options like the LG Wing to consider. It isn't technically a foldable, it's more of a rotatable, hingeable dual screen, but not to be confused with the LG dual screen accessory. Whatever you want to call it, the LG Wing is certainly a unique device, and because of that, it's bound to have some interesting use cases that maybe don't immediately come to mind when you look at it. We're definitely going to be reviewing it, so stay tuned for some interesting videos on the channel. In the meantime though, it's pretty clear that while foldable tech is very cool and has some genuinely great use cases, the high cost of entry and missing features like water resistance and top tier cameras keep it from being an easy recommendation for most people. I think tech enthusiasts will love foldable tech for what it is now and what it could mean for the future of mobile, but until that future includes a decent selection of foldables for under $1,000, I think you're probably better off buying a regular smartphone. For now. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel, it really helps us out. And stick around for our coverage of the LG Wing and plenty of other upcoming devices. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.